everyone, welcome back to the Keep On Growing channel. My name is Leonida Cavazos and I am an LPC associate here in the state of Texas. So never in a million years did I think that I would be making this video today. It's still something that is so exciting. It just means so much for counselors in training and LPC associates. The fact that we have now been given the option by the Texas State Board to own and operate our own private practice while being supervised by our supervisors. Now this right here is the date that this ended up going into effect. So the end of February, it was a very exciting time. Me and my supervisor were also keeping an eye on things because we both knew that I wanted to do private practice one day, but then this option became available. So it was such an exciting moment. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the resources where you can find the information all about how LPC associates can now own and operate their own private practice. And we're also going to be getting into the checklist that I created for myself to get my business up and running. So hopefully if this is something that you want to do, I'm honestly over the moon to be sharing this with you because I had to look for hours and days for all of this information. And so honestly, it is my goal in this video to just have one hub, one video that you can come to get all the resources that I found helpful. So definitely be sure to check out my description box because everything will be linked there. So let's go ahead and get into this video. Okay, everyone, so first things first, where can you find the information, right? For, you know, LPC associates being able to own and operate their own private practice and be self-employed here in Texas. So I'm going to go ahead and link in the description box a link to the video that was shared by the Texas State Board because if you didn't know, they have a YouTube channel and highly recommend that you keep up to date with it and see what they're talking about in their meetings because all of these things really affect us and our career field so it's so important to stay informed but essentially here's a quick little clip from that video where they were talking about making this a thing a pretty in-depth dive into how other states have handled this uh, we don't have a we don't have a reference a comparable reference point that indicates that there has been an increase in complaints after a state board began to allow this to allow direct billing and owning and own, owning the practice. That is correct. I don't I, think there'll be a harm to our community having more people to provide service because we need it. We need more people to provide service. And right now, um, LPC associates are providing services to individuals, right? They're they're providing a service. They're doing one-on-one service. They're just not able to financially benefit from the work that they are doing. So whether this rule is established or not, like in the sense of their own business. So now that those changes have gone into effect, I'm going to leave down below the link to where you can find the Texas State Board rule change. And if you're like me, you're probably going to read the changes that were made and be hella confused because it doesn't state word for word that LPC Associates can now own and operate their own private practice. It was really left up to interpretation with the understanding that independent practice you know quote unquote essentially means trying to have a private practice without being supervised which is what you cannot do so you have to have a supervisor and also a supervisor who agrees to supervise you if you are thinking of being self-employed and opening your own private practice as an LPC associate. And so that was the gist of what I got from the video that I watched also that they really wanted to grant LPC supervisors that freedom to also be able to say, hey, you know, I don't feel comfortable working with you, dear LPC associate. I just don't feel comfortable supervising you as you're trying to open a private practice. And so personally, I think that's fair, right? I think the supervisor should be able to choose if they feel comfortable doing so or not, just like we as counselors are able to choose, you know, what clients we're comfortable working with. So yes, that's definitely something to be aware of and to keep in mind when you're looking for a supervisor, making sure that it's someone who supports this goal for you as well, if this is something that you want to do. Now getting into the part of this video that I was very excited to share with all of you, and it is my checklist for all of the things that I had to do in order to prep to open my online 
private practice. So in my private practice, I will be working telehealth. So I work from home and I see clients through our HIPAA secure client portal, super important, which I will mention in the checklist. But yeah, so I virtually run my private practice, which is a dream come true for me. So item number one was me consulting with someone who was already working and had their online business the way that I wanted to be working. So with another LPC, but you can also consult with your supervisor if there's someone who owns and operates their own private practice and they have that insight to share with you. So I would definitely suggest that before you go and consult with anyone else that you have this conversation with your supervisor or your potential supervisor beforehand. And so I know for me, this was something that my own supervisor recommended that I go and consult with someone else who was doing what I wanted to be doing. And for me, that was Monica the Nice. I've talked about Monica in my videos before because she has been so helpful and so kind to me. She has just been a huge inspiration to me and meeting with her, I was able to really hone down my niche, you know, the clients that I wanted to work with and just really have a clear view of how I wanted to show up on social media. And she also gave me a really good overview of some of the things that I was going to need to just get my online business up and running. So yes, yeah, so glad that I got to consult with her just to get everything started and have a clear vision of what I needed to do after. And there were still other things that I had to look up on my own, which I will share with you all because there are various components that go into opening up your online private practice. Now moving on with the second checklist item and that is filing your business with your county clerk. So when I went to my local county clerk's office, I had to have my name ready. And I'm sure that for many of you, if you were to look up the form online, you would probably save yourself time, but I just didn't really know what I was doing. So I just went to the office, got the documents that I needed to sign and so I went home, quickly signed everything, put my business name on there. And then I went to go get those documents notarized with the local notary business. And then I went back to the county clerk's office and just gave them all of that documentation. You want to already have decided if you are going the LLC route, sole proprietor route, there's different options. So it's definitely important to pick the one that you feel most comfortable with. And again, I will share some video links of just some videos that I found to be helpful just to get a little bit more educated on what the difference was between them and what would be good for me, you know, short term and then eventually what I could transition into and all of that good stuff. Now, if you end up going the LLC route, I believe the one extra step that you would have to do is to register your business name with the state. And so definitely don't quote me on this. Do your own research if you are going to be going the LLC route for now. But at least a lot of the reading that I was doing really did point to that having to be done if you were going the LLC C route so if anyone on here is watching this and you have any insight definitely feel free to let us all know in the comment section if this is something that you had to do in Texas now the next checklist item is getting liability insurance and honestly if you've already been working in the field as an LPC associate then you should definitely already have liability insurance because we should not be meeting with clients unless we have insurance already in place and that is something that you have to pay for even if the place where you work has its own insurance it's super important for us to have our own liability insurance. Now, again, this is a topic that you can definitely bring up with your supervisor and they should be able to give you some different options into what to look for. Personally, I decided to go with the same company that I had back when I was in grad school and I was doing my practicum hours. Up next on the list is getting an NPI number. And so this is going to be crucial for billing. And again, you might already have this if you've been working as an LPC associate, so you just want to make sure to go Go in there and update all the information that's something that I had to do as well and so next would be to get your CAQH number not to sound like a broken record this is something that you probably already have if you've been working in the field for someone else's practice or if your site required you to have one so just go in and update all of the information next checklist item is to get an EIN or tax ID number now you can go ahead and do this for free by going to ris.gov super easy super quick it literally just took me a couple minutes to sign up and get this so after doing that i ended up booking a meeting to open a separate business account so this is 
very very important that way you keep your personal and business finances separate so when it comes to tax season and when you have to get everything ready you have everything nice and separate and you don't have to get things confused so you will definitely save yourself headaches later and i myself i'm not at the point where i'm doing tax season but i'm already anticipating how much easier that's going to be with keeping everything separate so i will definitely give you all an update next year when tax season comes around now the next item on the checklist was to create my website and this is something that is very personal to what I wanted. So for me, it felt very important for me to purchase and create my own website. And I personally utilize Squarespace to do this. I found it a lot more user-friendly because you can still customize certain things and make it more personalized and utilize you know, your branding colors and the images that you want. But it has pre-made templates that you can choose from, especially maybe if you're not very tech savvy yet and you're still learning. I know there were things that I still had to take my time to learn throughout the month that I was working on this. And it took me a couple weeks to get it just up and running. I went down a wormhole and I was just getting everything prepped because I wanted to create a seamless experience for my clients when they go onto my website to easily book a consult call for me and book a session. So I had people like my husband or my sister look through my website and see if they found anything that was a little confusing or just not as user friendly. And so I went and edited and re-edited a lot of things. So yes, this one was very much personalized to how I wanted to run my business. So that'll be something for you to decide if you want to stick more through booking at first through social media or whatever works for you. The next checklist item is a must have this is like the bread and butter of everything that you're going to be doing and that is purchasing an ehr program so that is where you're going to be having your secure hipaa compliant you know meetings with your clients where you're going to be billing creating your notes having your consent forms all of that good stuff and personally i ended up going with simple practice it was what monica ended up recommending to me and to be honest it did take me a little bit to get the hang of it because i was learning how to navigate it because i was personally used to using therapy notes but once i got the hang of it now it's just seamless like it's just so great to have everything in one place and it definitely took me a couple days and weeks to look through the tutorials and just get to know everything and I want to say that for anyone else who wants to do this to just normalize the fact that it takes time and so super important to be gracious with ourselves as we're learning these new things because unfortunately grad school really does not prepare us to venture off into opening our own business and private practice very often so there was definitely a lot of learning that happened in the month of February for me now the last and final checklist item or items should I say really pertains to just all the little things that go in between creating your business that if you add them all together they're really big things they're the things that will have your business up and running and I decided to just group them all together because a lot of them are admin tasks and, and things like that so personally I had to create my own separate business email where I could also contact clients if I needed to and link that into my EHR there was also a lot of linking that was done between my bank account and to the EHR program so that way when I process payments for clients that's all linked together and even though there are templates I had to go in and edit the consent forms and the intake forms to make sure I had the questions on there that I really cared to have for clients honestly I'm personally so excited about this because my clients don't have to go through a whole intake process first before seeing me for a session they can just fill out all the intake paperwork and then our first session can begin with all that intake paperwork filled out. It's honestly just amazing both for me so I don't have to write a huge note like rewrite everything and then also for clients so they don't have to feel nervous you know when they're thinking about what medications they want to write or just personal information that might be hard to just think about on the spot so they have time to really work on it before our first session. I also had to decide my business schedule like all the little decisions you know that happen during this time when it comes to the admin tasks that I'm going to be doing and so that is it everyone that is the checklist a really big and important item 
items that I had to do to finally be able to open up my online private practice. So obviously if you're going to be opening your private practice in person in an actual building, then you will have more items and other things that you will have to do in order to do that. But this is specifically for anyone wanting to do online private practice as an LPC associate. And super important disclaimer, this is not me trying to give anyone business advice. I think it is so important for each of us to make our own decisions when it comes to our business and the things that we're planning on doing. But I really felt passionate about at least being able to share a little bit of what I did to hopefully inspire someone else to know that we can do this as LPC associates. It is hard work to open up a business, but if you're a fellow LPC associate or counselor in training, you know that we're used to hard work and to learning new things and getting things done. So this is just a similar feeling like to when we get handed our syllabus at the beginning of a semester and we feel a little bit overwhelmed by all the things that we're going to be doing. But if you take time to gradually work on each one, before you know it, you will be done and up and running and shocked, you know, and happy and excited and all the things. I really hope this video was helpful, everyone. Again, I just wanted to create the type of video that I needed and that I would have found helpful as I was starting to do all of this. Thank you so, so much for watching. Be sure to let me know in the comment section if you are also a Texas LPC associate who are thinking of doing online private practice or any kind of private practice or even if you're from another state and this is something that has already been allowed for you or in place by your state board i would love to hear about your experience also thank you so much for watching everyone take care and i will catch you in my next video bye